Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 11 for chapter 5. The topic for the chapter is the Laplace transform. In this video, we continue our discussion on the um, step function and uh, its representation for discontinuous function. So, Let's now look at the Laplace transform of the unit step function. So u c of t, in, we defined already, um, is a function that is 0 for t less than c and is 1 for t bigger than c. And here c is a positive constant. And we are only interested in the function for t bigger than 0. So by definition of the Laplace transform, we can easily do this calculation. Laplace transform UCT is the integral of the function with the um, exponential, it's called a kernel, e to the negative st dt. And now using the definition of uc of t, which says it will be 0 for t um, less than c, and then um, we can simply integrate um, from c to infinity instead of 0. Okay? Because for t less than c, it's 0. We can drop that term. And then for t bigger than c, it's 1. So we put 1. So simply, we just have an uh, integration of an exponential function. OK, so let's work this out. So the integral of this function is e to the negative st over negative s taking the limit t from c to infinity. OK, so plug in the limit um, at infinity. If s is bigger than 0, we get 0. And then at t equal to c, we get e to the negative sc negative s. And then we can drop the 0 and cancel the two negative terms. We get this expression. So it's e to the negative sc over s. OK, so let's summarize. This is a very important Laplace transform. It's good to memorize it. So the Laplace transform of the unit step function at c, step at c will be e to the negative sc over s for s bigger than 0. OK, now let's look at um, how do we shift a function. So um, let's say we have a function f of t, which is given for t bigger than 0. Then we can define a function g of t to be the following. This means it's a definition that will be um, multiply the function f by u c t, the step function at c, but then at the same time shift the f function by c unit to the right. OK, so this product. So what does that equal to? Well, we can write it out because u of c is of t is 0 for t less than c. So for t less than c, I just get 0. And then for t bigger than c, I have this shifted function here times 1. OK, so how is this function g related to the function f? Well, we see that it is simply the shift of the f function by c unit, um, but uh, assuming f of t is 0 for t um, less than 0. OK, so we can um, draw a graph. Um, let's say the function f is given for t bigger than 0. Let's say some shape. This is a, just a dummy. I can draw any shape. And then the function g would be taking this function from 0 and move it to c. So the whole thing is moved by c unit to the right. And then whatever is less than c, we put it to be 0. Okay, So this thing is shifted to here by c unit. OK, so um, now comes the interesting um, question. So how are, is the Laplace transform changed after we shift the functions? Okay, so let's take a detailed look at it. So now let's um, denote capital F of S to be the Laplace transform of F of T. And then um, what would the Laplace transform of B, uh, G of T be? 
um, where g of t is this shift. Okay, so let's compute. Um, the Laplace transform of g would be the integral of this function here times um, this g here, which we write into in the detail. And then again, using the fact that u c of t is 0 for t less than c, then and then it's 1 for t bigger than c, then we can just integrate from c, and then mm, this will be 1. Then we don't have anything. We can just drop the 1, and we'll have this integral. And now this um, doesn't look like it's um, um, immediately connected to the Laplace transform of f, but we'll see the connection. So what we do now is to make a variable change. Um, instead of t, we now change it. We call variable tau, um, which is t minus c, where c is a constant in this variable change. Okay, And then t can be written as tau plus c. And then dt is equal to d tau because c is constant. OK, so let's put this uh, variable change in. And then um, so we know t is tau plus c. So I put tau plus c here. And then t minus c is just tau. And dt is d tau. So we have that. And then we know this exponential function term can be written into two terms. One is e to the negative s tau, and the other term is e to the negative s c, right? And uh, we're integrating in tau, therefore the term e to the negative s c is constant for this integration. So we can pull it out, and then we, what we have is e to the negative s tau f of tau d tau. Okay, now we see that this term here is exactly the Laplace transform of the function f. We simply just wrote the um, integration variable tau instead of t, but we can call it by anything. Okay, so we have this is e to the negative c s times f of s, which is the Laplace transform of f of t. Okay, so in fact, this is the very important the second shift theorem. So taken from the calculation we did in the previous page, we know that Laplace transform of a shifted function f by c unit in the in the t space equals to um, the transform of the f function, not shifted, multiplied by an exponential function in negative cs. Okay? And where the c is exactly matching the the shift it, the how many and units it's shifted. So this theorem says that a shift in the t variable is related to multiplying the transform function by an exponential function, e to the negative cs. So it's a counterpart of the first shift theorem where these things happens in the other way. Okay. And then an important um, observation is um, an equivalent uh, statement of this is that if we say that this is the Laplace transform of that, then we know that that is the inverse Laplace transform of this. Okay, So the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative cs fs would be, um, you first have to find out what is f, the original function, and then you have to shift it by c unit and multiply by uc of t. Okay, so um, I want to stress again that we are now only considering the domain t bigger than zero because we're considering initial value problems. Okay, so if you write u0 of t and then it equals one in the domain we're talking about for t bigger than zero. Okay, so the final remark, this theorem is the counterpart of the first shift theorem. OK, so let me make a remark, um, which might not be um, such a surprising remark. I want to show you that um, the Laplace transform of uh, uc times f of tc, these are two separated functions. And that does not equal to take the Laplace transform of each and do the multiply. Okay. 
And in fact, um, this is a general property. In general, the transform of the product does not equal to the product of the transforms. Okay. This does not hold in general. Okay. So for, for such um, transforms, later on we will learn um, the concept called convolution and uh, we'll cover it later in this chapter. Okay, so to summarize in this video, we talked about Laplace transform of the unit step function and the Laplace transform of the um, shifted function and uh, which led to the um, second shift theorem. Okay, and we will end the video here and next time we will look at examples of applying the second shift theorem. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.